Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, today I'm here with uh, Wally Malewa, um, who has invited me into his lovely house, and we're here in this fantastic little uh, bungalow situation. So, uh, Wally, thank you for joining me. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's get into it. So, quick introduction on you. Um, you got a Bachelor of Business Administration at Copper Belt University. That's correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then you have been the Managing Director of Impact Media for almost 18 years. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. What is Impact Media? Uh, Impact Media is an outdoor advertising company. Uh, we have billboards, basically, and we do a little bit of branding as well. Uh, it's... Uh, it's like you said, it should be about 17 years old. Uh, it's one of the main players in the outdoor market in uh, Zambia. We just recently opened an office in uh, Gaborón, Botswana as well. And we have been looking at uh, going into Congo as okay. well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are like when I drive around Lusaka and you see these giant advertising you, you know, you should advertise here signs. That's yeah. you guys? Yeah, that's okay. one. Uh, no, there are a lot of companies that do it, but we're one of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you yeah. start Impact Media? Yes, I did. Okay. I used to work for a company called Alliance Media Holdings as their regional business development manager for East and West Africa. So that's where I learned the business. And then I was working out of Kenya and I decided to come back and do it at home. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let's start with college. So um, a lot of people are kind of wondering, maybe not as much in Lusaka, mm. but more in the U.S. especially, people are kind of wondering, is college worth it now, right? Many uh, business owners are not necessarily looking for college. They're looking for more experience. Exactly. Uh, did you find that you're, um, A, when you're hiring people, yeah. are you looking for someone with a college degree or are you looking for someone for experience? And when you were getting into the field, did you find that a college degree actually helped you? Well, uh, at the time when I started work, because uh, I'm 49 now, I think I started work around 23, 24, somewhere there. Uh, at that time, uh, you know, having a college degree was something important. I actually went further and did a master's degree. But, you know, I found that most of the jobs I was doing, I was not really using the degree th that much. I mean, it helps you to think and it helps you, you know, to look at, uh, different situations in you know in another way but uh, I don't think it's absolutely necessary I would say one of my best workers does not even have a college degree he just learned the job uh, you know like job on training he was actually like uh, an office orderly like he would clean up the office janitor yeah yeah, yeah. like a janitor yeah yeah okay here we call them office ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah he was like that but i mean now he's you know he's my supervisor and he understands and he's committed to the work and he's grateful for the opportunity and he has grown with us so um you know especially in zambia uh it's a third world country uh opportunities to get employment are much more difficult than in the first world and you have a lot of universities churning out hundreds and hundreds of graduates. The business is the university now because those graduates, 60, 70 percent of them have got nowhere to go, you know, and it's a sad situation. And I know I once jokingly said to a friend, I said, you know, I sent my daughter and son to university in the UK. I said I should have just given them that money as seed capital, you know, for them to start a business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that mm. may have made more sense. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. What um, what got you into? So obviously, you got a business administration degree. What what kind of interested you about that? Well, I've always been interested in business. I mean, uh, since I was a kid, I'd always do strange little things. You know, I was you know always trying to make a buck here and there. You know, buy this and you know sell it. And I think my first business deal was I would. Like uh, we were in Canada, then my dad would would go like to um, Niagara Falls for conferences every now and then. Then he once brought me these balloons. Uh, they were shaped like dolphins. So I said, and I took them to school and all the kids loved them. So I said, well, next time you go there, please let me know. Then he says, oh, I'm going there, whatever. So I'd saved up my allowance, my pocket money. And then I said, get me balloons, those same type. And I sold them to the kids at school. And they finished, and I like doubled, tripled my money, 
you know so it's and it went on like that i mean it progressed from balloons to other things yes you know? <laughs> obviously yeah. you're no, no yeah. longer a balloon salesman uh, no 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 i think i graduated from that <laughs> yes yes yeah uh, <laughs> and then you recent or uh, maybe not recently you moved into real estate as well yeah um, so you yeah. actually own the apartment complex that i live in yeah, yeah. um so what kind of when did you when did you kind of make that shift well the the property is because uh you know in in this country it's more like the safest investment and at the time i did it there wasn't a lot of real estate development going on and we were getting extremely good rentals the economy was good the currency was strong and uh, there was uh, you know significant cash flow in the economy so it made sense i mean th at that time i made those apartments i was getting two thousand dollars for an unfurnished apartment. Wow. Which you cannot get now for a no. furnished one. Yeah. So uh, it made a lot of sense at the time. I mean, even now, I mean, you know, property appreciates. So, you know, the, the amount of money I spent to develop that and the amount of money should, if I had decided to sell it now, I mean, this is a huge difference, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's a good store of income. It's a good uh, passive income. Yeah, and, uh, you know, also, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's good, like, uh, legacy thing because, you know, you can pass it on to the next generation and they right. can develop from that and so on. Yeah, yeah. my yeah. dad has bought several properties back okay. where I'm from. And so, you yeah. know, when he um, when he dies, he's going to give us, you know, he, he keeps telling us, <laughs> you all get one of my properties <laughs> to deal with. with. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely. <laughs> but in the U.S., property is kind of... Uh, a tricky one because the U.S. Uh, if you don't pay your property taxes every yeah. year, the government even if you you bought that property like in cash, you own it. Yeah. If you don't pay the taxes, the government can just take it. And so, yeah. is that well, not a well, thing here? No, it's not a thing here. And uh, the the our property rates are much lower than uh, those in I would say in America or whatever. I'm not sure what they are, but you definitely could not grab a house or complex or whatever it is from someone because uh maybe for the whole complex maybe you're paying like four hundred dollars a year f in property rates so it's wow. not it's not that much okay yeah yeah but people still default you know people just don't like paying so but and you know obviously you have to look at the income of uh the people obviously uh, the incomes in this part of the world are much lower than the united states so it's also an issue of what can people afford to pay and then obviously politics comes into play because if if you charge too much you become unpopular and you may not win the election <laughs> you know so you know they have to be very careful when it comes to taxes which which uh which uh, cut across uh, all all uh, all all spheres of life or, or what what would i say i'd say which cut across you know all, all income, demographics all demographics yeah. all income brackets yeah, yeah. okay yeah. that makes sense it's interesting though that you know, zambians their, their view of property, or at least their view of kind of public property, um, is very different from the U.S. And one of the ways that plays itself out is that Zambians litter everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like there's garbage all over the roads. Mm -hmm. um, so do they, ha do they not have that um, problem, like if it's their own house and it's just if it's public property, they're more likely to do that? Or does that kind of extend into their own, their own ownership? Well... I would say, you know, that's uh, that's, that's a double-edged sword. You know, it's it it could be an issue of upbringing. Usually, in poorer neighborhoods or you know, in more densely populated areas, that the the garbage issue becomes an issue. But if you are in a middle to upper class uh, neighborhood, it's it's not a big as big a problem. Because um, the way I think the problem stemmed from uh, the local authorities, we call them the councils here, uh, not having the capacity to to uh, deal with uh, with uh, a lot of the refuse. They don't have the capacity. So uh, the issue that could be there as well is that you know the councils need to be uh, empowered to be able to handle you know the all the all the dirt and the garbage that is generated and unfortunately they don't so you find in a middle or upper class area like where we are now uh you know we pay private guys to come and 
remove the garbage and so on so you don't see it as much yeah. you see what i mean so um you know i don't i wouldn't say it's not caring about public property i would say maybe they we don't really have a good maintenance culture because you know when you maintain things it's it looks cleaner you know when someone who has not lived here comes you you look at it with uh, you know with fresh eyes so it it's more it it comes out more clearly to you it's but shocking yeah, yeah but to to someone who's lived here most of their life you know i think it's t- sort of starts to become normal so it has to do with uh, with uh, with that as well but uh i mean it's it's a personal thing i wouldn't say it's a cultural thing but i do know as well that you know uh if uh, the 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 poorer you are you know your maybe your emphasis is uh is on other things like more on survival you're, yes you're thinking what will i eat tonight you know what i mean you know so and then maybe you just clean your immediate area you know what i mean so but you find like because you can't really say it's a cultural thing because when you go to the villages up country uh they're yes they're very basic and you know uh, they don't even have running water and things like that but they're clean and uh you know the diseases that come out of uh dirt like cholera and diseases like that you don't find them in the villages really no they're not there it's in the towns that's fascinating yeah because the sanitation is poor in the towns the water is not clean and then uh, there's a lot of garbage so and that that doesn't happen in the villages yeah 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 one of the um most reliable ways i've found to kind of figure out a, a country or at least a population's wealth mm. is by the uh the wealth of their houses the wealth mm. of you know the the properties that they own mm-hmm. um, but many zambians as you said are thinking more in a survival mindset even if i was talking to um another guy and he was like even if they have money mm-hmm. they're more they're like they're still thinking in a survival mindset um, and that's not that's a very anti risk taking mindset yeah. which is what is necessary if you want to like Ex- exceed and improve as a country uh, if you want to yeah. grow your grow your you know your your gdp and other things like that so how does zambia move into an investment and risk taking mindset that will kind of take them to the next level well there are a lot of issues which uh which impede on that i mean like the cost of capital you know you know you can have um apartment complexes in the United States and you 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 own them but you know they're financed right so you have all these complexes and then when you reach a certain threshold you're earning so much you can get another one and then when you reach another threshold you can get another one but in Zambia mostly if you see someone with property they actually bought it outright now that's quite difficult because most people in uh developed in the developed countries they pay for their their mortgages or they pay for their properties over 25 30 years now imagine trying to acquire a property in one year and then also the cost of capital like i said i mean we're we're playing around anywhere between 28 and 32% interest if i get a loan now wow. in america or wherever you probably pay 4% for your mortgages or something like that maybe 5% you see so there are all the so that now affects how much property i can acquire how quickly it also affects uh the quality because if i'm financing my property uh, you know you, you may tend to you know use a property developer or a contractor who is cheaper because you know you can't afford to use the very professional guy because he's going to come and tell you okay uh, to develop this property is half a million dollars and then you look and you say i only have $200,000 what so the um, it's it's not that they're not risk takers it's it's the environment you know a lot of uh a lot of success that people achieve in their lives although they don't they would rather explain it as no oh, uh, i had a, a risk taking mindset or you know you you'd always hear that you know it's a uh, because of something they did or they were smart they were just maybe in the right place at the right time they could get the right uh type of finance and they had contractors who had the right skill set 
and they just put everything together and then it happened you mm-hmm. get what i mean yeah. not not to uh not to play down people's efforts or people's creativity but you know uh, there are a lot of things that uh you know that go in the pot to to you know to to bake the perfect Im- investment you know some sometimes it's opportunities and you know maybe this other place doesn't have those opportunities so it becomes a bit more challenging yeah 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 no that makes sense and that um kind of ties into the next thing which is the amount of power outages that we have here yeah um how why why do we have all of the power outages because um i was talking to someone they were saying actually zambia has like should have the most like the least power problems out yeah. of its surrounding countries. Yeah, because uh, we've got a massive uh, potential for hydropower. And hydropower is clean energy. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, fossil fuel based, right? So uh, we rely, we've relied on, uh, although there is a, a, a coal plant uh, down south, Mamba Collieries, which does produce some uh, some energy, but I mean it's uh, maybe five percent or something like that. It's it's not great. We've got the most inland water. We've got the most waterfalls, uh, which would which are needed if you have to produce uh, hydropower. Uh, I think um, there is a problem in that one we did not invest enough into hydropower. We should have developed more. Two. Uh, we should be less reliant on hydropower. We should have looked at other forms of uh, power generation. And then three, the hydropower that we rely on is uh, relies heavily on rain. So like this year, there's a drought. Yep. So if there's no water to power the turbines, you're going to have power outages. Yeah. And then also our main export, which brings in uh, the foreign exchange or revenue from out of the country is is uh is mining and mining consumes most of the power as well so if we didn't have the mines uh we wouldn't have the dollars but then again we wouldn't need so much power you see yeah it's a, <laughs> yeah it's a whole bag of worms yeah, all eating each other yeah but yeah. but i mean um the long-term solution is to look at alternative energies and then also to have a long-term plan to invest in uh you know developing hydro plants uh in the areas where they can be developed yeah whether it's through obviously that's uh, whether it's going to be through public private partnerships or government directly funding it but there is a genuine need to to uh increase generation it might be because the the power company is run by it's a it's a Paris state or, or ah yeah it's owned by the government so yeah. the solution may be to open it up and uh, allow private investors to come in and invest in in power plants maybe that 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 would improve the situation yeah, yeah. remove the monopolistic aspect of it yeah exactly yeah mm-hmm. Zambians seem to be pretty good though as a general rule of kind of walking with the rock in their shoe for a long time mm-hmm. um just kind of dealing with the mm. the you know the power outages or you know lack of water things like that they'll yeah. just kind of they'll deal with it is that do you think that's a good thing or do you think that it would be better to have kind of a hmm i don't like this let me fix it well you know there where there are things that you can't fix i mean you you find yeah. you find the alternatives drought. the drought is not yeah. you you can't really do anything about it so you just okay fine i'll get an inverter and then I'll have backup power. Then the power comes back. We're good to go. But you know, you, like I said, you know, a lot of things that happen. It's it's dependent on, you know, the environment that you're in, and you tend to adapt to it. It's not, you see, it's not as easy as removing the rock, the proverbial rock from your shoe. It's not that easy, because you're in this environment, and there's nothing really you can do about it. So you 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 get accustomed to it and you adjust and then you say look uh, i've got lemons here let me make sort of some lemonade you know that's it <laughs> yeah that's it there you go mm-hmm. um moving on to a different topic entirely okay. um are you a religious um, person are you christian muslim atr 
Well, I would say I'm Christian. I'm not fanatically religious. I'm very tolerant of other people's uh, views. I'm open-minded. I would rather say I'm a good person. Or I'd, I aspire to be a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, my parents uh, raised us um, th- 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 RCZ. Uh, I'm that's not where sure I know that's that one. Uh, yeah, that's Reformed Church of Zambia. Okay. And then when we were out of the country, when my dad was a diplomat, we used to go to the protest, Protestant church. Yep. Came back, we went back to RCZ. Somewhere along the line, my dad decided he wanted to become a Muslim. There are a lot of Muslims in the region where I come from, from the east. So they have a very heavy influence. So he became Muslim. My mom stayed Christian. They're both late now. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, uh, uh, my wife is uh, is Catholic, and uh, yeah, I do go if she asked me to. I do go to church, but I wouldn't say I go to church regularly. You know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like an Easter and Christmas kind of thing, <laughs> and weddings and yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. baptisms there, there and yeah. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, and that, and I do. I, I mean, because uh, I I do a lot of community work and stuff, so I do interact with uh, church leaders a lot, yeah, yeah. and they do invite me to to church, and I yeah, do yeah. go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why uh, Why have you decided to, you know, go down that path? Well, you know, the way I I I, I see it is that you know, most of what we do especially when it comes to religion, is not a decision. If you were born in Iraq, you'd be Sunni or Shia probably. Yes. You you don't really make the choice. You're usually yeah. born into it. You're probably not going to be a Buddhist. Yeah, yeah. If you see what I mean. So if you were born in Nepal, you'd be a Buddhist, you know. If you, right. were, if you were born in Ireland, you'd probably be uh, Catholic, you know. It's because it's just, it's situational. Now, um, like I said, I'm, I'm very tolerant and open to, to all different faiths, and I respect them. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I do believe in God, and I think that, um, you know, it's important for you to have your personal relationship with God, and I think uh, it will reflect more from how you conduct yourself and how you treat other people. Yeah. That's how, that's my reasoning. Yeah. 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 And do you, so in that vein, do you believe that being Mm -hmm. a religious um, kind of Christian, nominally Christian has helped you in your business life? Well, I don't think it has anything to do with business. I don't think so. Um, You know, Zambia is a country where they say that it's a Christian nation. Yeah. uh, And, you know, some behaviors sort of contradict that. I, I don't like to be a hypocrite, so <laughs> I I just try to be as good as I can and treat people well, um, whether it's in business, whether it's personal relationships. Uh, but um, I think uh, it's not really, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, uh, I think that, you know, when you have some principles and values, uh, it, it does guide you in your behavior so in that sense maybe it would be good but i mean i've done business with people who claim to be born again christians and they swindled me for money yep so uh, i don't think it plays a role it's just the individual okay interesting um and are most of the i would assume because most of the people in um broader zambia are nominally christian yeah. are most of the people in the business world are they Christ- nominally Christian as well, or are they kind of similar to yourself? Oh, uh, no, I think I'm a special case. But <laughs> I think that they're, they're different. This I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell. I'd probably have to do a research to find out. But I think it, ju- it just differs according to the person. Yes, the Christians are there in the business world. The non-Christians are there. Uh, the Muslims have a very heavy presence in in business. Yes, in I've noticed that. Very heavy presence. Yeah, not yeah. as much in the U.S. That's yeah. not that's not a thing. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Here, in the, here, most of the shops or many of the shops are run by Muslims. Yeah. And many of the companies that produce the kind, the local goods, uh, w- or the fast moving, the FMCGs, the fast moving consumer goods are owned by Muslim uh, yeah. Muslim uh, families. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, g- yeah. I guess they just understand business better. 
Yeah. <laughs> what is your kind of take on, do you think religion has been helpful for, um, for Zambians? Or do you think it has kind of hindered them or not really had an effect? Well, I think it hinders them in a, in a way because um, they're, uh, I wouldn't say all religion. I don't think it would be right to to blanket it and say all religion or all faiths. But uh, what I would say is, you know, there's been this, um, this uh, infiltration of Pentecostal uh, churches and yes, uh, they're I'm quite problematic, that. you know. Yes. They, they, they have these guys who they call papas and these guys are involved in, not all of them, but a number of them are involved in a lot of scandals and yep. and you know when you bring a faith to to a population uh which is primarily uh financially downtrodden and then uh you teach them that faith and uh you start uh attaching it to things which you know are are uh, important to them like oh if you pray then your cancer can be healed or you if know, you, you know, if you believe me, you will have yeah. fifty thousand kwacha. Yeah, you'll have magic money. Yes, you know. So you know, they they've taken advantage of some people, and I think in that way it's been disruptive. And now everybody claims they're a prophet; they can see the future. Yes, and uh, that has been, in my opinion, very disruptive. And and you know, when you look at someone who's in a desperate situation, if you claim to be a Christian. The last thing you should do is give them false hope or just outrightly lie to them and then tear them down. That that yeah. is even worse than just not being a Christian at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um it's uh in that way I think it's been quite disruptive and I think it we need a bit of regulation to control that. I mean, every corner there's a prophet. Where, where are they coming from? They weren't there before. I know. I, yeah, and, and there's it's multiple just like, kids who believe there were prophets yes. in the school where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and it's 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 funny because they're like, if anyone was going to be a prophet, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be them. Like yeah. They don't show up to class, and if they do, they're making fun of the teacher uh -huh. and they're playing video games. Yeah. And it's like, guys, you have to realize that, like, mm -hmm. even if you really believe you are a prophet, mm -hmm. you should probably act like one. Yeah. You know, don't just if you're going to say you're a prophet. Mm -hmm. Just say it, you know, yeah. actually do something. Um, yeah, the behavior is, uh, it contradicts uh, the whole thing. So, you know, um, getting someone to, you know, if you have a faith uh, and then you do things to discourage people from that faith, you're doing more damage to to Christianity than helping, you know. And you cannot be uh, a con artist or a scamster using religion and taking advantage of people who are very desperate. I don't believe in that. Yeah. 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 So I'll jump in where you left off on the religious topic. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, the, the, there's several kids as, as I was telling you in my class who believe that they're prophets. And then they are also kids who believe they're apostles as well. And it's just, it's uh it's sad because they're taking something that I think is beautiful um, and and destroying it and using it for their own, like to get money and to, to scam these people who exactly. really like if if I were to, you know, if I were to produce this kind of scam, this is the right place to do it. Like these people are desperate. Yeah, they need it. Um, but and but lying to them is not it's mm. I mean, eventually they'll lose they'll lose faith in you, I hope. Yeah. But yeah. It's it's you know, really sad. You know, there are people who, uh, for one reason or another, they you know maybe they they may be prophets or maybe uh, God uses them and they see things. The reason why I say it is because I have that. It happens to me, but I've never used it uh, commercially or whatever. Uh, I mean, I'll give you an example. I literally saw my mom's death, and I told her a week before that this is what I dreamt. And when I had these dreams, they're very vivid. Yeah. And then she said, oh, no, she was very religious. She said, no, let's just pray, pray about it. We'll pray against it and everything. She had been sick for a long time. And the day that she did pass, someone called me at five in the morning. And when they just called me, I said, mama's died. Then they're like, how did you, how know, did you know that? Yeah. I said, I don't know. Yeah. And I was very close to her. So there are other things 
that I ha have seen, and then there's things that you see, and then they don't happen. They don't, they don't quite make sense. If they don't make sense, and then they don't. Ha then there are other things which are very clear. They come in in your dream, but then it doesn't happen. Yeah. Like last year, I had a very specific date, and a very specific person, my cousin. And then I said, you know what? I can't tell him this. How about if it's a hoax? I'll 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 stress him. But nothing happened to him. But it was very specific and very clear. Yeah. But so you know, I guess I haven't mastered how to you know to, yeah. to determine what is real and what's wrong. Yeah. So I don't want to alarm people or you know. And it's not that all the visions that come to you in your sleep are 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 real or. Or, or messages. will happen, right? Yeah, yeah. but but uh, apparently some have. Uh, yeah, no, then, I absolutely then, agree. I yeah, I think it's wrong to to use that now to take advantage of a person. If there's something that you see, then you know maybe you can use it as a prayer point or something, or yeah. maybe it opens your mind to maybe try and help or warn someone or you know discourage them from taking that trip or what whatever it is. But yes, that I mean. I, I have experienced that and sometimes it's quite scary, you know, where you start thinking about it and and ironically two of my kids have it, you know, and they never told me. They they only told me I think three years ago. They're like, Ah oh, no, you know what? Uh we actually that same thing that happens to you, we get it sometimes but we, we didn't want to tell you, you know, because it yeah. stresses you. So yeah. I said, ah, anyway, just forget about it. It's no, fine. it's true. I think I think it, that's actually the uh, the right way to handle it is, yeah. you know, these things do happen. We yeah. we live in a world where, you know, like it or not, there are some things that are kind of, they don't really make sense physically. Yeah. Like there's there's something else going on. Yeah, um, exactly. Whether, whether we can lay, put a finger on it and label it or not. Something yeah. else is happening, and exactly. so if you can, but that that's not a kit. That's not a uh, that's not a call for you to suddenly go tell everyone that you are receiving prophetic visions from God. Exactly. And so I'm exactly. having that conversation with the the kids, uh, the guys I'm with. It's like, you know, yes, God still, mm. you know, there are still things that happen to us that don't really make sense, and yeah. they happen to me as well. Where it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I ask for a certain thing to happen, and then like you, res it's like almost like a clear like vision of like what's you know this is you know no or yes or what yeah. whatever it is, but that's not a call for you to be an apostle or a prophet, and it's yeah. it's sad to see them take that and misinterpret it as something that they should use to um, to in a way a like oppress people in um who believe them exactly. and who are too gullible or, or, to, or to definitely or to use it to make money because yeah. i mean these guys yeah. already are poor to begin with yes they're getting the little they have you yeah. know because of maybe one or two visions you had or whatever for so for me uh, you know uh i'm a more practical take a more practical approach and you know, there are times when those visions would disappear, even for two, three years, I wouldn't get them. Yeah. And then someone would come and ask me this. I said, I don't know. But that's the truth. Yeah. And then when, whenever, I don't know, I don't know what causes it, then they just start coming on their own. And then you just have to have a certain level of discernment to try and understand. But it is kind of scary when you see things and then they happen just like that. Yeah. You know, before I used to think it was deja vu, but you know, there's a difference between deja vu and uh and you know, literally seeing something and it literally happens like that. Yeah. You know? So Yeah, and you have that moment of like, wait a minute, I think I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah, it's yeah. uh very odd. But I think that um going back to an earlier point you made of uh, this is really like this is a bad look for the Christians. Yeah, they're it just is. spending it all their time is. swindling. Is but I don't think that's what the Christians are meant to be. Back where I'm from, it's a very Christian atmosphere, a very Christian town. And I think that they're actually living out their Christianity correctly in a way that, like, the non-Christians are always asking, can I work with the Christians? Mm -hmm. Because they're the people that work hard, they're diligent, um, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to scam you. They're, they're going to be, in. they're, they're, they're honest, they're intelligent, they're trying to solve the problem, trying to help you. Yeah. I think that's the right way to live out Christianity. And 
you know, Martin Luther has a, has a quote that a Christian shoemaker doesn't do his job by putting little crosses on all the shoes. Mm -hmm. He does his job by making good shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that's still something that needs to be, um, that needs to be realized here in Zambia. Um, because currently it's, hey, let's put God is faithful on the back of our van and mm -hmm. then drive like, you know, there's mm -hmm. no safety, mm -hmm. you know, safety regulations at all. And we're mm -hmm. putting everyone's life at stake. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that people have done that correctly. I think where, where I'm from, they're doing it correctly. And I think that's a real testament to the, the, the power of what Christianity could be yeah. um, and in business is just those are the people you want by your yeah. side. Yeah, we have, I, think, I, think I, it's think the, I think it's yet. the poverty and desperation. Uh, obviously, where you're from, I'm sure the poverty level is not, nowhere near. Yeah. Definitely so, not. So it'll, it'll be very difficult for people to come and practice Christianity in that way in your in your town because you're you're not a, you're not in the same yeah yeah we're I far less likely to, 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 to fall for it to <laughs> need to believe them yeah yeah exactly absolutely yeah. moving on entirely um, so you have been posting pictures on your whatsapp stories of you all the time <laughs> in the gym uh -huh. uh, with your with your weights uh -huh. how have you always been in the gym exercising yeah, okay. Ah, I'm a funny person because the, there are times in my life where I was very athletic, then the times where you'd let go and then, you know. But yeah, I do work out. I, I work out because, you know, um, I, I'm not naturally a strong person. Like, uh, I was the sickly child with the asthma inhaler and skinny, and, and then my dad was a diplomat. I'd go to school, the whole school from uh, elementary up to high school you're the only black kid there and you can imagine what that's like yeah it, yeah so it wasn't uh the best of experiences i'm the seventh born out of eight so wow. i was bullied at home by my brother i go to school i'm bullied by the kids there and then i easily get sick and whatever so i said okay look let me try and work out let me try and make myself strong Yes. One, so I can defend myself. And then two, so that, uh, you know, I try and w improve my health. Yeah. You know, yeah, that was uh, just about it. But otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do, I, I do work out. It's just that um, I used to work out quite a bit. And then I developed, I got a few injuries. I got a compressed disc in my back. Mm. And then uh, I used to run a lot. So uh, I have a problem with uh, my knee. So uh, now I can't do those things, but I can still do something. You, you can lift weights. Yeah, I can like do that. something. Yeah, so go. just to try and keep me, you know, yeah. keep me going and whatever. Yeah. Have you seen any benefits from your exercise in like your business life and your mental clarity and things like that? Well, definitely you've got more energy. You don't get tired as quickly. Uh, you know, you, you've, uh, you know, you're in a better mood. You're not, you're not, uh, you know, it helps manage stress as well. And, uh, you know, I'm not a moody person, but, uh, you know, I, I don't easily get, uh, you know, shaken or whatever, even when challenges do occur. I'm sure part of it is just, uh, you know, mental steel. But again, it's also the exercise must chip in somewhere there, you know. Yeah, it helps. Uh, you know, when you get your endorphins flowing, it uh, it definitely helps. When you don't, When you don't exercise, you know, it's 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 you something feel lazy else. And yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. days ago, and Zambians do a lot. Don't really work out. Um, at least most people that I've come across. It might be different in the circles that you move, but yeah. most people that I've come across, at least in the younger generations, don't really they work, don't out. work out. Um, I guess uh, I think they do work out. Uh, mainly, I've seen the middle to upper class. They work out you know, to try to fend off these uh, lifestyle diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure and the like. Yeah. A lot of my friends work out. I guess also it's the age because definitely, I mean, you're young, you look good. You don't even have to work out, you know? So I work out, I work out every day. But yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, when you're 20 or whatever, you know, it's a whole you, lot you, easier. You just, you just look good. You know, they say beauty is free up till you're 25. After that, you have to work for it. Yes. You know what I mean? So when you're younger, you know, you probably don't have lifestyle diseases. You probably, um, uh, you know, you probably look good in your clothes and stuff like that. You probably have more than enough energy. 
you know so maybe the unless you're an athlete you know like maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so maybe it's also like you said maybe it's the circles we move in but like out of my friends i would say if uh like okay i've got this old uh university buddy group i think we're about 13 or 14 in there i would say out of those 13 or 14 like four work out or five work out properly ah. and then you got the others who just like maybe ride a bike or or you know take a walk or stuff like yeah. that and then you got like maybe about another four or five who absolutely do nothing <laughs> you mm. know but i mean those are personal choices yeah. yeah but i wouldn't extrapolate it to the whole population because a lot of people their jobs are exercising themselves that's that's true yeah, yeah. i mean a lot of physical labor yeah because a lot of people have jobs like general workers uh the guy is uh, a gardener or what you guys would call landscaper or something so just their job is is, is a workout in itself yes it is yeah yeah definitely um you you also have uh several kids mm -hmm. and uh, i think grandkids running mm -hmm. around in there uh -huh. um and one grandkid one grandkid. <laughs> oh, okay there you go yeah um and how have you managed uh, to kind of balance the the work and kid life at the same time uh you know i'm uh i'm at that stage in uh, my career where i'm i'm almost on autopilot like i've got my guys at the office they know what they're doing we've worked together for so long uh that they know where to take it so uh i spend a lot of time home i've got a home office right here so i'd say i go to the office once or twice a week i'm actually here more than them <laughs> so if they come from school i'm here and yeah so yeah it says uh, it hasn't been hard to balance it at all yeah yeah I'm, yeah I'm usually what would here. you say kind of to people who are wondering if they should have kids and if they you know if having kids will kind of detriment their career or yeah. they're worried about that well uh, again that's a personal decision it's uh beside it being very time consuming it's also expensive so it also depends on what you are looking at i mean there are people who you know i always tell people that you know you can be a good husband but a bad dad you can be a good dad but a bad and vice versa you know so you need to understand who you are as a person so if you do not have time if you are not tolerant if you do not know how to sacrifice and share uh then maybe kids is not really for you but you can't really tell someone not to have kids yeah but uh you know it's really up to you i don't think there's any career that would be hampered by someone having kids i mean um whatever the career is you should be able to 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 balance it and your family will understand that okay dad has to go to work or mom has to go to work and this is what they do and so on and so forth this is how we eat yeah this is how we eat it's, uh, so that's that's how that's what we have to do i mean you, yeah. you you get used to it uh i'm fortunate that i started my own business about 17 18 years ago and i don't have to wear a tie every day i don't have to report to anyone i don't have to go to work if i don't want to you know so um in in that sense uh, i've got a bit of flexibility yeah. not to say that i don't work i do work yeah but i work as and where and as how i wish to yes work. Yeah. yes given yeah. that flexibility yeah and then your kids also at least your son i know are part of the business yes yes was yes. that was that kind of a conscious like hey this is important to get my kids involved in this i think he wanted it he's the one who wanted it i ah, did okay. not i did not uh, he has always wanted to be in the business and and run the business. I've always encouraged him that, you know, he must look at other opportunities and he shouldn't come and just, you know, uh, continue with what I was doing. He should develop and change and expand. And, you know, he shouldn't just look at, oh, no, I'm just going to go there and, and coast, you know. So I've tried to put that in him. Obviously, it's important for succession planning that someone else in the family knows what to do and knows uh understands the business so that in the event that you're not capable at the time or not available or you yeah. die, or you pass away you know there's some continuity 
you know, in it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it would be a shame to lose uh, something which is working and generating uh, income, you know, just because one person yeah, is not and, there. Yeah, and, you know, something you've spent your whole life on building yeah, and, and exactly, creating. Exactly, yeah. exactly. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, kind of final remarks. What would your encouragement be to someone either in Zambia or else, elsewhere around the world who is looking to start a business? Oh, I definitely encourage them. I'd say go for it. But look at uh, look at the environment you're in. Look at the opportunities that are there. Look at the challenges that you'll face, and then uh, get into a business which uh, is not, you know, if if it's not something that uh, is. Um, is uh it's not something you're pioneering it's something that already exists you know find your niche and uh try and see where you fit in and what you can do and uh and and go for it it's much more rewarding than than working you know yeah. like for for an organization for or an something. organization yeah, yeah yeah yeah. it's much more rewarding and uh, you just have to stick with it it's it's not always easy it's not always hard either but uh it's definitely more rewarding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would your encouragement be to someone who's thinking about either going into college or coming in and, you know, starting their business career? What would your encouragement be to them? Well, you do not necessarily need a college degree to to work or to, um, to run a business. Uh, you can, uh, you can, you can weigh your options and see, uh, because if you want to start a business and you're looking at, should I go to college or start a business? If the opportunities are there, if you're making money, you're not sure that those opportunities will be there in four or five or six years. But you are sure that if I start this business, I start making money, the college will still be there in five, six years. The business opportunity may not. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no, that is helpful. Yeah, you can go to school anytime. Yes, the yes, yeah. many people have graduated at 80 years old, 90, yeah, things exactly. like that. Yeah. I did my master's degree. I think I was uh, how old was I? I was uh, 43, 42 okay. when yeah. I did my master's go. degree. Living proof. Yeah. There mm-hmm. you go. And then what is it that kind of as people are looking at you, I mean, you've got a lovely house, uh, you got things going for you, you got your own business. How what is it that made you successful and how can people cultivate that? Well, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I saw an opportunity. I was in the right place, right time, and then I did the right thing. <laughs> you know, I didn't wait. You get what I mean? Because opportunities don't wait for you. Yeah. So, um, and then obviously you have to be disciplined with money. You have to, uh, you know, cultivate relationships with clients and with your employees. My the business is eighteen years old. My youngest employee in terms of years worked for me is probably sixteen years or wow. Or sixteen or fifteen years. Wow. I mean the, one of the guys that was here he just left. He was saying you literally saw me grow. I started working for you when I was nineteen. And then I said, Oh, is it? And he says, Yeah, I'm 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 almost thirty seven now. I've got four kids now. I've wow. built I've built a house while working for you. You're the one who taught me how to drive. And I, I didn't even I didn't even think about it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said then I said, So what are you gonna do if I decide to stop the business? He says, I'm following you wherever you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So yeah. building a relationship, fostering good relationships with people is very important because then they can do the work when you're not able to fostering good relationship with clients, you know, being being honest. Uh, delivering when when there's a, a service or product failure you know being honest enough to uh, go back and and rectify the problem even if they don't know about it yet you know you have to be principled in that sense you know making sure you stay on top of things that you pay your bills you pay your taxes because these are all things if you do not pay attention or, or uh, to them they can bring your business down so that's how I would say, you know, you have longevity in business and, and you, you manage to grow. Yeah. 
Yep. That's really helpful. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. Uh, where okay. should people find you on the internet? Uh, um, in, you know, in real life, if they're in Lusaka. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm not that hard to find. If you just type, uh, my name's long, it's Msaiwale, uh, M-S-A-I-W-A-L-E. Msaiwale, M-J-M, I'm on Instagram. On uh, Facebook, I got two pages. I got Msaiwale Mlewa and I've got uh, Wali Mlewa. And uh, yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on X as well. So threads. Yeah. Hey, just type Msaiwale Mlewa, M-L-E-W-A or Wali. You'll find I'll, me. I'll put as many links as I can in okay. the description. All right, cool. All right, and where thanks. should people find Impact Media? Impact Media is on 7136 Chiwengele Road, Light Industrial Area, Lusaka. Okay. Yeah. And if they were looking for it on the internet, do you guys have a website? Yeah, we have uh, we have a page. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, and then for the apartments, we have got a page as well, Dove Courts Apartments, and for Impact Media as well. Yeah, yeah. outdoor advertising. There you go. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. This is uh, this has been really fun. Okay, no, that thanks very a lot. So, All right. thank you. Cool. See you guys.